What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna bring you how I power leveled and got all this EXP and reached level 80 in three and a half hours during the during the brand new Lunar Awakening event in Diablo 4 Season 3. So I'm gonna kind of break down the process. My team, we are running this thing. We've been farming nonstop and just kind of power leveling. If you do already have characters and you wanna get an alternate character, I definitely advise you taking advantage of this event and just really, really maximizing your EXP for alternate characters. Again, we got to 80 in three and a half hours. Technically it's three hours and 25 minutes, but we just rounded up. So how did we do this? How do we break all this down? Because we we really did this in like a few different steps. A lot of it's gonna be the same and then we have a lot of the newer things. Um, overall, it's pretty much the same method as you would do in previous seasons to power level. So in three hours, three hours and 25 minutes, three hours and 20 minutes, we hit level 80. So how do we do it? So the same thing is going to apply here when you're going through these. You're going to have to complete your capstones, okay? You got your very first capstone here in Kmart, which is going to take you from World Tier 2 to World Tier 3. You immediately do this. You don't do anything else. Then after that, you're going to go to World Tier 4, which is from World Tier 3 to World Tier 4. I think the capstone is actually right here. It spawns right there. So you're going to do that capstone to go into World Tier 4. Now, once you hit World Tier 4, all you're going to be doing is getting these brand new Lunar Sigils. Hold up. We can't die. We can't die. This is perfect for the video as my team's running. Get some. Get some. So, you're going to be looking at the brand new Lunar Sigils coined by my boy, DBT there in the party. These are the brand new Lunar Sigils. They have the brand new Affix Ancestor's Favor. Extra Lunar Shines uh, spawn in the dungeon, as well as 10% more Glyph EXP earned at the end. So how do we know what the Lunar Shrines look like? They look like these purple Shrines right here, and you get like roughly three of them per dungeon. And the biggest thing about them is it does showcase what they are. Blast Wave, we have one for Condi, and then we have one for Channeling. Now the Shrines are completely random. And you can actually spawn when you first start a dungeon. You can pull up the map like I have here. And it'll show you, not the map, but it'll just show you where the actual um, shrines are in the dungeon. So you can kind of gear your way and path your way to the shrines. Because how it works for the bonus 50% EXP is you only get that EXP effect when you're under the effect of a Lunar Awakening Shrine. So while you have the effect of the shrine, you're going to get 50% bonus EXP. Now, what do we do to maximize that on top of other gains? What you're gonna wanna do is pop your elixir, of course, for 5% more XP. And then you wanna uh, do the um, essences. These essences are very, very strong. Um, or no, they're not essences. What are they again? Oh my gosh. Um, I always blank on these for the video. What are these called? Um, level this up. God, I'm just blanking again. They're not essences, it's the, uh... oh my gosh, what are these things called? Blank, blank, incense, yes. So you pop the incense for an extra 5% on top of your um, elixir here, incense. I don't use them enough, I always forget, thank you chat. So you pop your elixir, of course you pop your elixir, you're gonna pop your incenses here, and then while you're under the effect of the shrine, you're gonna get 50% more EXP. So you got 5% here, 5% here, that's 10. You got 50, so that puts us to 60. However, when you're in a party, you're gonna get bonus EXP from that. Okay, this doubles to 10%. And then you're also going to get an extra, what is it, 15% or 12% XP if you're fighting monsters that are 10 levels higher than you. We, are, we, were, we were just doing tier 51s, so that puts it at 109 or 100, yeah, 109 monsters. A level so that's still 20 levels higher 30 levels higher so we're getting the maximum amount of xp this is the way you're going to do it as you level now how do we effectively uh, be efficient with our time so you're going to go through the dungeons and you're basically just going to speed farm them as fast as possible you're not going to be worrying about picking up so much gear you're not going to worry about trying to you know, look at every single item. That's why it did take us a little bit longer because we were just kind of slow rolling. Um, we probably could have done this in two and a half hours if I'm being honest. 
but you don't want to do what I'm doing right now and just kind of slow rolling and looking at all your gear. What you're going to want to do is as soon as you finish one, you're just going to come in here and you're going to pop another one. That's all that you're going to want to do like Dead Man's uh, Dredge here. We're just going to pop this. I don't want to pop that. That's actually a bad one because that is, uh, there we go, Nightmare Portal. We'll just pop that. We don't want no Death Pulse. Death Pulse is really bad. So you're just going to pop the sigil again and you're just going to farm constantly. It's so fast to gain this XP. I think in totality getting to level 100, uh, we're going to pop it again. I think in totality getting to level 100 is probably going to take you somewhere around six hours with this brand new event. Again, we're just going to go into the event and just break it down. Now, once you do all of that, you're just farming. You're just farming nonstop. You're not doing anything different. You're just going to try to be as efficient as possible. Now, what I will tell you to do is that if you are struggling and you are having trouble just like fast clearing mobs, you may be doing dungeons that are too high. Like this is a 49. So we're fighting monsters that are what? Exactly 100. I don't need to fight monsters 20 levels higher than me. It only needs to be 10. So effectively what we could do is do lower level dungeons. We could do 40s, which puts us to 94. We could do 36s, which put us to 90. So if we were doing 36s, that's exactly 10 levels higher. And it makes it to where we're farming them much more efficiently because the monsters obviously aren't as strong. So that is exactly how we've been utilizing the Lunar Event. You can see here that again, when you pull up the map, it shows you where they are. And this one's here, it's a lethal shrine. And you can kind of plan again on your map, how you're gonna go through this, which is cool. You got a Condi, a Blast Wave, and you can really kind of just try to plan this out. So again, you're just kind of farming through this. I think this is a great event. Now, a few things that I do want to say is kind of a bummer in a sense with this brand new Lunar Awakening event. Although I do think it's a cool idea to keep the events coming. Uh, the fact that we only get the 50% XP while we're under the effect of the shrine is kind of a bummer, but I will say this. You do have the Season's Blessings, the Urn of the Enduring Grace. This boosts the duration of the shrine effects by 50%, which is really nice. Now, what you could also do is, is on your gear pieces, as you find them, if you really wanna to try to maximize gains, what you can do is just find items that increase, uh, I don't think I have any here, but you can find items that increase um, shrine duration. You can really look for that. That is a really strong way to be able to increase the duration of the shrines. So you can kind of try to maximize these. I'm trying to see if I have one, but I don't. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. That would have been really good for the video. I don't have any of that increased shrine duration, which is kind of a bummer, but yep, that sucks. That's okay though. But that is one way. Uh, the biggest way is to make sure that we're using town as lava, okay? When you're in town, again, I'm gonna showcase this real quick as my team's going through. So let's say we finish the dungeon. What you're gonna wanna do is just level up your glyph. If you have a glyph, you're gonna level up. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go straight through. All you're gonna do is go through. You can dump things if you need to. You need to be in and out of town in under 30 seconds or faster. So here, come into town. Okay, I had a legendary pop. Let's just grab these four, right? I'm not even gonna look at them. What I would do is come in here if you need to sell, hit junk, do that, repair, boom, open up inventory. You're gonna grab it and you're just gonna pop another one. Everybody accepts and then you're back in. You're literally under in under town is lava be under 30 seconds and you're good so then you zoom back into the dungeon and you're just farming non-stop you can literally farm millions of xp per hour doing this strategy so again super good if you're trying to be efficient you can try to like do your gear along the way so but i get a lot of questions where i get asked hey when you're even when you're leveling up don't you want to try to get some gear to equip your character and whatnot Yes and no. What I would tell you to do is, is that when you're running through, look for spe specific gear pieces. A good example of this is I'm looking for a very particular sword for my build. So I'm not picking up any daggers. I'm not picking up any regular bows. I'm looking for a better crossbow and a better sword. So the other weapon categories that would work for the rogue, I'm not picking up. So I'm not picking up any of those items. I'm just running over. I don't need pants. I only need a chest piece. So I'm looking at that. I'm not looking at rings. And you just grab these things and just go. When your inventory fills, like which is probably every other dungeon or maybe every third dungeon if you're being really, really picky with the gear you're picking up, um, then you could take the time in between that to kind of go through 
look at all your gear pieces, sell, salvage, whatever you need to do for your build, right? You know, if you, hey, this is the sword I need, then I can take the time to swap it, upgrade it, whatever you need to do, okay? But that is literally what we've been doing, guys, since the launch. I had to work tonight, so I got out, and when we got on, we kind of checked out a few things, and then once we started farming, it took us roughly just over three hours to hit level 80 which is just absolutely insane this event is going to be going on for two weeks okay we started today we get two weeks of this event so if you are interested in playing a alternate character or maybe you still aren't to level 100 with your main character that you started the season with this is definitely the time to do that take full advantage of this lunar awakening event the overworld event acts a similar way when you just find these events here you can just do them which is really cool however you're not going to get the increased xp um now before we end the video i do get questions a lot when we've made videos like this in the past is that we get a lot of well hey i'm a solo player what do i do if i can't be in a party and get the benefits that way so if you don't or don't like to play in a party or you do have issues finding somebody to get you through the capstones the best things i can tell you to do for this event currently is to go farm the overworld what i would do is farm the overworld event here or if you can you're still going to go in and do uh domain tunnels and hopefully that you get some shrines in there otherwise i would farm domain tunnels the xp in the overworld is not super great for this event even so but if you can farm these back to back efficiently then i do think that that'd be the fastest way until you can get into world tier four or at least world tier three um, and then you can farm those other events but as soon as you get to world tier four all you're going to be doing is cracking um sigils like crazy the lunar sigils guys it's super easy to get the ancestors favored these things just drop like candy you can make them at the occultist and it's super easy to get and when you're doing this i would tell you don't worry about what dungeon it is just farm them for the extra exp don't worry about it don't go oh i don't like serpent slayer so i'm not going to run it just run the ancestors favor because they are going to continue to drop okay so if you're a solo player try to just get a power level so you can get into world tier four but if you don't want to do that just farm again in the overworld and then once you get to world tier three uh do the same thing in the overworld it's super strong or go farm domain tunnels is probably still the fastest way and then world tier four you're just gonna be farming dungeons that's it Okay. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Level 80 in three hours. Absolutely insane. I think by the end, you could probably get to 105 or six hours. Absolutely crazy. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.